welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. I'm going to get down on my knees and pray I need God, so do you. Let's stand to our feet while I get down on my knees. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, how good it is to be in the house of the Lord. Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace, making our petitions known as you have requested us to do. And Lord, we ask that the teacher of the church would teach us tonight. We don't want to hear from a man, don't want to hear from a woman, don't want to hear from a human. We want to hear from the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch us, heal us, strengthen us. Encourage us, guide us, guard us, direct us, and motivate us to be all that you would have us to be. And we'll give you the praise, glory, and all the honor. As you bless us tonight, we're so blessed. Bless all the churches in the Inland Empire as well as around the world that are preaching the gospel and hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're our brothers and our sisters. And as well as you are blessing us, we want you to bless them. Bless our Baptist brothers and Lutherans and Methodists and Episcopalian and Charismatics and Pentecostals and Calvary Chapels and Harvest Oak Valley and Oasis and Inland Christian Center, the Assemblies of God, Foursquare Denomination, Trinity Emmanuel Baptist Ecclesia Church, Lord, the way we thank you for San Bernardino Temple. We bless you, Lord, for our Catholic brothers and sisters and Adventist brothers and sisters at no time, none. Lord, do we think of ourselves as better than anybody? We're just co-laborers, workers in the field, building one kingdom, not a man's, but yours. May all the praise and glory of this night, what you're going to do in the hearts and lives of all of us this night, could be written on a 100,000-page tablet for all that you're going to do that we won't even see with our eyes, but you will know in eternity how great it was and how great it is. We thank you, Father, for a mighty move of the Spirit of God in this place. Jesus' mighty name with a great big amen, we all shout it. It is good, good, good. Go to the word of the Lord with me in 2 Timothy. I've been uh, saying this a lot, and I just thought it would be kind of neat for us to spend some time on this subject. For me, it's been an important subject as I take adventures in life. I'm, um, I'm doing something I haven't done in a lot of years. Uh, years ago when we started this church, the Lord asked me to step away from my business and come and pastor the church. We had about 300 people in the church, and I, I, we didn't have a building. We met at the Hilton Hotel. I counseled at the Hilton Hotel in the lobby. I'd, if you had counseling, uh, I didn't have any place to meet with you, so... I met you there at the Hilton Hotel in the lobby, and, and there were so many people going in and out of a hotel, they didn't know if we were guests there or not guests there, so they thought we were just meeting and were staying at the hotel. A little deceptive, but um, I, you know, when you're broke and you don't have a place to meet, that's what you did, and that's how we started this church with 12 people. And when we got to about 300, God said to me, I want you to leave the business. I, you know, you've heard the story a million times, but I didn't want to leave my business. I really liked what I was doing and, um, and, and making a lot of money. And uh, I, my thing was with God, God, I, uh, let me just keep making money and I'll just fund the gospel of the Lord because that's always been the desire of Debbie and I is never to be pastors, never to be preachers, even though she's on her way to tomorrow to Miami to preach all through Florida tomorrow and next week and be back mm, a week from today. And so I'm going to miss her for a week. We, we didn't really intend to do that. We intended to fund the gospel. Recently, I've, I've gotten uh, an agreement with the Lord and God has released me to go ahead and start my business back up again. And I'm real excited. And uh, you say, well, how can you do that and pastor this great church? Well, there's 17 pastors at this church. They can handle it. And they are good. Any one of them could have their own great mega church, and they're excellent. And so in the meantime, I'm going to get my wish, desire is to fund the gospel. Um, 
And so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. In doing so, I've, I found myself in a position of, of being fearful from time to time of uncertainties and ways of life that I don't understand anymore. And uh, every day I'd have to make a statement, God hasn't given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Every day as I faced life, business, trials, tribulations, and situations I didn't know how they were going to work out, I have to make that statement. It's found in 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse number 7. Let's look at it ourselves. Then I'll give you a title of the message. For God has not given us a spirit. Please circle in your Bible the word spirit of fear. It's interesting how he didn't say God hadn't given you an attitude of fear, hadn't given you just fear, but he actually describes this condition in our lives that's fearful at times as we approach new things as a spirit of fear. And then he comes along and he says, I haven't given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. As I have been doing business that I haven't done in a lot of years again and uh, taking steps of faith and not knowing how business works anymore like it used to work, everything's different and everything, everything is completely different. Um, I find myself, as I said, making that statement, God had given me a spirit of fear because I re recognize that fear wants to come in and stop me, wants to come and hold me back. And so tonight I want to share, I feel if I'm going to be having to, you know, be resisted by fear and stopped by fear and slowed down by fear, then if that's happening to me, if you're making any kind of an adventure in your life, you're going to have that same feelings. If you're trying to hold your business together or if you're going to go to school and you don't know how to go to school or if you're going to make decisions in marriage or husbands and wives or with children and, and move to this place or buy this place or do this, somewhere along the line you're going to take steps that are going to be courageous steps and the spirit of fear wants to come in and stop you and hinder you and slow you down from everything. And that's why tonight, I just thought it would be good for all of us, including me, obviously, that we would discuss the subject of fearless stand for the future. In order for you and in order for me to make a fearless stand for our future, we're going to have to be a people of certain qualities inside of us, an understanding about this little word called fear and a little word called spirit. If I could just share this with you just for a moment, fear is not a bad thing. It was never intended to be a bad thing. It was something to slow you down and stop you from making mistakes. Let me, let me say it again. Fear, the intention of fear and why it's in your life is it was to slow you down and keep you and stop you from making mistakes. Could you say slow you down, slow you down. and stop you? Could you say that? And stop you. See, it wants to slow me down and stop me from making mistakes. That's what fear, the intention of fear is really all about. For an example, if I'm about to sin in an area, it would slow me down and then stop me from operating contrary to the ways of God. Uh, if I was to run out into the street and I were chasing a ball and had no fear of what would take place, eventually I'm going to be hurt. But if I'm slowed down and stopped before I get into the street, I'm not going to get hurt. And that's why fear could be good, but when it's used as a spirit against you, then what it does is it will slow you down and stop you from the things God has for you. And then all of a sudden, that which is meant for good becomes bad. Are you following me? Now, that which is meant for good that becomes bad, who do you think designs that? 
It certainly isn't God who meant it for good that becomes bad. Satan takes that which was meant for good and turns it around and uses it to slow you down and stop you from ever being and doing what God would have you to do because of the spirit of fear that wants to come upon us and keep us from being and doing all that God has us to do. Debbie and I were talking about this morning. We found out something. Listen, if you can get out of bed and believe God and go to work at something, you can have something. My goodness, getting out of bed you do every day, believing God hopefully you do every day, and getting in and making something happen, you try, do your best, and then God gets involved in the rest of it, and then all of a sudden, but the spirit of fear wants to come in, slow you down to the place where you start questioning who you are. I mean, there's people that live their whole lives when there was, there was a marriage that was waiting for them, a family that they could have had, but they were fearful. There's people that have great business on the inside of them. And once they started getting started in business, they didn't know how it was going to work and out. And so they got the spirit of fear upon them that slowed them down and stopped them. And then the business became something they talked about instead of something they ever did. And they never got into the blessings that God had for them because they allowed the spirit of fear that is designed to slow you down and stop you, completely slow you down and stop you, even in the areas of good things. So I have to become wise enough to know what is it that's good for me to slow down and stop on, like sin and bad things such as that that are contrary to the ways of God. And I have to be wise enough to know that this is a God thing and I can move forward on this and God will bless it. And then all of a sudden what I do becomes more than just words. Most Christians talk but never do anything. And the reason they talk and never do anything is because of the spirit of fear. Don't know where they're going, what they're doing, how they're going to do it. When we're young, we don't... Remember I told you this a couple of weeks ago. I was making a statement. When you're young, you got an excuse. Because you're young, you don't know how it works. Never done it before. Spirit of fear comes in and stops you. When you're middle-aged, you say, well, I heard of somebody who did that and tried that. And then the spirit of fear comes in and stops you. When you're old, you got all kinds of excuses. Oh, the bones don't work well. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm forgetting stuff. I'm tired. I want to sleep. Take a nap. I snore when I sleep. I've gained 40 pounds. I just don't feel as good as I did before. I guess I just, I'm called. Let me tell you something. There's always going to be an excuse. And the spirit of fear backs that up and keeps you slow and keeps you stagnant from ever accomplishing that which God would have you to accomplish. But well, listen to me. If you understand this process and you recognize it, you can work it to your good. Is anybody listening? Because God truly wants to take you someplace you've never gone to be something you've never been, to say something you've never said, to accumulate things you never thought you could accumulate, to witness to people in places you never thought you could witness and, 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 and to. And it never will come to pass until you understand that this is a spirit that wants to slow you down and stop you, which it's designed to do in sin, but not in the blessings of the Lord. Is anybody listening? A fearless stand knows some things, four quick things that you know. If you just simply know these things every day of your life, whatever it is that God puts in your path to do, you'll do them. So a fearless stand knows something. You know, if I don't know that what we're talking about tonight, then when fear comes upon me, I will always question whether or not it's God or not. Has anybody ever done that? I wonder if this is God. I wonder if God, I wonder if God wants me to do this. I'm not sure. You know, but a fearless stand knows something. Four little things that Deborah and I live on in order to do what God's called us to do. Can, can I just say something to you? Uh, I, I just want to say this to you. Look. Let me just be up front with you. I'm 67 years old. I will be 68 years old. My next birthday. My physical body doesn't really want to do anything. 
When I can't sleep at night, I say, good, I don't care. I just like laying here. <laughs> Doesn't bother me a bit. <laughs> but it's only 11 o'clock at night. Don't care. <laughs> I'm trying to paint a picture for you something. I have accomplished some things. Got a great family, got a great marriage, saved a few bucks in my life, gave away a whole lot more than I've ever saved, got a great church. I mean, you know, we talked about honor last week. I mean, Deborah and I are honored. People call me right before I get in. I got people calling from their side of the world asking questions. I'm honored, I'm greatly honored. Israel Hooten comes through and honors me because he's heard about this church and so much. I mean, I, so look, well, I'm saying all of this not to brag. I'm saying this and why don't I just stop? Just leave it alone. I don't have to do anything. And neither do you. But why live life like that when you could have, do great things with God. And why do I live life based on what I want instead of what he wants? What I want is to stay in bed and have a couple of rolls in bed. I'm not talking about the kind you eat. I'm talking about rolling over this way and then rolling over that way. <laughs> But why do what I want? Why not do what he wants? Understand how the process works and let him work for you. Wow. A fearless stand knows four things. Number one, God is my strength. Every day, I got to know when I get out of bed, who. I don't, I tell you this truth, saints, inside me jumps out of bed. The physical body doesn't. I have to catch up with my spirit that's jumping all over the room, yelling, hallelujah, come on, man, let's go, let's get him. I'm going, why don't you just get back in bed? Yeah. And so the whole thing is this, every day, I've got to know that God is my strength. If I look at myself, a young person looks at himself, says, I'm not qualified, I'm not smart enough, I haven't gone to school, I haven't been around long enough, I make bad decisions. A middle-aged person says, oh, I've tried it, it hasn't worked. I know people who have it, uh, that tried it and didn't work. Uh, I hate failure, I feel funny when I fail. An older person has all the excuses in the world. Listen, my point being is this, there will always be a day that you need to realize this is not about who you are, but about who he is. If my business works, and I believe with all my heart it's gonna work, it's gonna work because of who he is, not because I'm so cool. Even though I am. No, 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 I did play with you. I mean, everybody that just came for the first time, they're out of here. Oh, I'm just playing with you, I'm just playing with you. But, but the truth of it is this, it's about him, it's not about me. I can't get anything done. I don't feel like doing anything. I don't really even wanna do anything. But there's something on the inside of me stirring me. You know what that is? It's a God who gives me the strength. Yeah, yeah. Who makes a way where there is no way. Who opens the doors that no man can open. That closes the doors no man can close. When I approach tomorrow knowing assuredly that God is in control and in order for me to fail, you gotta go through God to get to me. Well, I'm telling you, right now, something's going to happen. And every day, it's God. This is not based on what I look like. This is not based on whether I'm fat or thin. This is not based on whether I have hair or don't have hair. This is not based on whether I have a beard or don't have a beard. This is not based on whether I have eight chins or three. 
It's based on who he is. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't know how to make it work. And fear wants to come in until I get off of myself and admit I can't do this, but he can. And he is the one that'll make a way. We, 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 uh, we said something to, to each other today, Deborah and I were having coffee this morning, and she says, well, what if we, and it doesn't, and I said, Deborah, if we, and it doesn't, oh, well. Then she says, well, what makes you think it's, and I said, I don't know how. I just know that God is in this. And when everybody, what does it say? A thousand may fall at one side and 10,000 at my right hand, but no plague will come near me. In other words, there's something different about us. We've got God on our side and he's just been waiting for, for centuries for somebody to believe him in a mighty way. And it's you and I. I love what it says in Isaiah, the 12th chapter, verse number two. Let's read verse number two. I'll go to Isaiah, the, uh, the 12th chapter, and verse number two. Let me get there real quick. You've got your Bible. I want you to turn there. Isaiah 12, verse number two says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, which is the name of the Lord, the Lord is my strength in song. He also has become my salvation. Because of that, watch this, verse three. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. I don't know if you know what verse three just said. Verse three says everything about you. First of all, in verse number two, it says, Behold, is my salvation, I'll trust and not be afraid. I'll not be afraid. Then he comes along in verse number three, and he says, Therefore, he says, With joy will I draw water from the wells of salvation. The word water means that which you need to sustain life. The word salvation means your very existence on the planet that you've been set free also in the heavens, but especially here on this planet. Because you don't have to be set free in the, pla in the heavens. So here he comes along, he says, therefore, because I'm not afraid, here's what's taking place. I will get what I need in life to live out the life to the fullest. That's what he's saying in verse number three. So God is my strength. Every day it comes from him, not from me, not how cute I am or smart I am or how talented or gifted I am, not because I can do something. Man, I'm gonna get in there and make it happen. Can I tell you something? You're not gonna make it happen. And when you get in there with an attitude that says, I'm gonna make it happen, it won't happen. But when you get in there with an attitude that says, he's my strength, he will make it happen, then it's gonna happen. Somebody ought to give me a great big amen. Second thing that I've got to know every day so that that spirit of fear isn't on, on me is that man cannot harm me. Amen. We're afraid of men. We're afraid of what they think of us. We're afraid of what they see in us. We're afraid of, uh, of, we try so hard to be seen and recognized and approved by man. We want them to think we're all that, man. And I'm here to tell you something. No matter what you lose, no matter how many times you have failed, no matter what it is that you've got, your God is greater. If you've lost a home, God will give you a better one. If you've lost a business, God will give you a bigger one. If you've lost anything, God is a God of redeems. He's a God that justifies. He's a God that's looking for somebody that he can bring to pass. This is a God that you and I have. He makes it all work. And we all have to just get to a place of realizing that we don't have to be afraid of what men happen. You know, I don't give a flip how many people fail before me. How many people give up before me? I don't care how many people have not been able to make it work. I got God and it'll work because of God. Somebody ought to say amen. And can I tell you something? Debbie and I talk a lot and she says this to me. She says, you know, if we lose, that's everything we have. 
I said, no, it's not. The best we have is him. And anything I lose trying to build for him, guess what? He'll give back to me whether I get it from that source or some other source. God will make a way. You and I cannot lose because of men. In order for us to lose because of men, men have got to go through God to get to us. Come on, somebody. And why are we fearing what men have to say? In Psalms 118, turn there in your Bible. It's all Old Testament tonight, isn't it fun? Psalms 118, verse 6. The Lord is on my side. Ooh, come on now. I will not fear. Somebody say, I'll not fear. What man do to me? What can man do to me? Not a thing that's going to mean anything. You know all those people that come against you and badmouth you, criticize you and judge you? Huh? You know all those people that are frustrated with you, call you names and judge you and all that kind of stuff? Can I tell you, who gives a flip what they have to say? The only one you and I care about is what God has to say. And I have good news for you. If you're a child of God and the biggest screw-up there's ever been, God still loves you. That's good news. So man can't harm me. Third thing, that means, you know, because I face in business every day. You know, I don't, I'm worried about you guys. But I'm in the business world, and that, that, I mean, that, it's, that's a blood-sucking world out there right now, you know? And so, and Debbie comes at it. She's so sweet. She comes at it with this gifting approach to things. She is the neatest lady in the world. She does business. She says, oh, how much do you want? I'll give you more. <laughs> Mama, you got to stop giving everything away. Says she is a giver. That woman is great. She is, she's really, a, she's not here, I can tell on her. She's nuts. She loves, she loves to give. I mean, a, a, she just loves to give and give. You hang around her, she'll give you everything. It's amazing. I, I'm telling you, she just gives all, what do you want? You can have it, you can have it. Doesn't matter, I'm going, shut up, won't you? I'm gonna go preach, get the offering, bring it home to me. <laughs> what can man, man can't harm you at all. Third thing I had to learn, so the spirit of fear doesn't slow me down and stop me in my life. Third thing, uncertainty is just a part of life. It goes with the territory. If you, here's what I'm saying. If you have to figure everything out before you make a decision, you will never be successful in making a decision. You gotta calc it all out. It's gotta be so super safe. Can I tell you something? If we were super safe, you would never be in the seat you're in. Faith is, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things I hate it, not seen. I hate faith. I wanna see it calculated out. I wanna add up two plus two makes four. This is an obvious deal, can't miss it all. Can't, listen, not a chance. With God, you will find constantly uncertainties. Uncertainties means you can't figure it out. It, it doesn't make sense. It isn't gonna work that way. Two plus two is not a four. It might be if we squeeze a little here and a there, but it's more like a six. And God takes a six and makes it work. Uncertainties are part of life. And if you let uncertainty stop you from your future, you will never have a future because guess what? Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you can't see this stuff. You just got to know that you know on the inside 
My God is going to make a way where there is no way. I'm following him. He's the captain of my salvation. He's out in front of me saying, come on, son. I've already gone down that path. You're going to love it. Come on. Come on. And that's what the captain of the salvation is all about. You don't have to be afraid. We're always afraid of everything in the world because we can't figure it out. Who gives a flip? If you lose, God will make a way for you. Is that not true? Listen, I told Debbie, I'd much rather go broke trying to do something for the Lord than have all the money in the world and do nothing. Give me a break. Sure, it's hard to run a business. Sure, it's hard to deal in today's economy. Sure, it's hard to see a government fail before our eyes. My goodness sakes alive, this is the craziest thing in the world that's going on. And yet we, we've got a, a, a situation taking place, and we've got to keep our eyes on the things of God. God makes a way where there is no way. Let me say it again. God makes a way where there is no way. So if God makes women, if God makes a way where there is no way, then don't look for the way before you get on the way. Understand that there is no way, and God makes a way where there is no way. And if you keep looking for the way instead of there is no way, you're going to end up never doing anything, and the Spirit of the Lord will slow you down and do what? Stop you. Let's try that again. The spirit of fear will do what? Slow you down and stop you. When the spirit of the Lord wants to take you somewhere. Yes, here's God makes a way where there is no way. That just says there's uncertainties ahead of you, but God's got it all worked out. That don't mean go do something crazy. When I was a kid, I did crazy things. I got up on a roof, said I was going to be a Superman, had a cape on. <laughs> Jumped off. Oh my goodness sakes alive. The biggest bump on the head you ever saw in your life. And it healed last week because it was only two weeks ago that I did that. But uh, uncertainty is part of life. I, I love this. Psalms 91 verse 5. Does anybody remember Psalms 91? Man, I tell you. You talk about a great psalm you ought to just put into your heart. Psalms 91, he who, delivers, who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. But verse 5 says, and you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. In other words, why are you afraid, full of fear, about something you can't see? Uncertainties, that's what he's talking about. Uncertainties. Guys, Listen to me. Uncertainties is part of life. You'll have to deal with them in faith. Believing God. I'm not talking about crazy stuff. I'm talking about when God leads you, you won't know it and know how it works, but that's what it's all about. And he makes a way where there is no way. Uncertainties. Anybody listening? Last one. I love this one. A fearless stand knows something. Knows that fear is just a reminder. Did you know that you can feel fear come into your life? Wait a minute. Has anybody ever felt a spirit of fear? Be honest. Absolutely. You can feel it. You've got to train yourself that what you feel when fear comes in is a reminder for you to get into faith. That's all it is doing is tapping you on the heart saying, now get out of this and get into faith. Most people allow fear to continue and never do anything about it. Fear should be the ringing of your bell that tells you that fear is now upon you now get out of fear and get into faith. There's nobody that's going to be absent from the spirit of fear not trying to come upon them. You will feel it when it comes upon you. You know what I'm talking about. But that's when you get so trained and mature that when you feel it, 
like, I don't know how many, I can feel the insecure, insecure position. I can feel the uncertainties of this whole thing. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I start to question where I am, what I'm doing. That's when you change. It is a reminder. All it did was hit you in the head or hit you in the heart with a little club that said, now get out of fear and get into faith. And you take, you take the negative and you turn it into a positive. Did you ever know that pain has a, 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 a feeling to it? A feel, when you have feelings, you have feelings for a reason. If you put your hand next to a cigarette or a lighter or, or a, a, a hot pot and it burns your skin, first thing you'll do, you'll retract from it because you felt the pain and you got away from it. When you feel the pain of fear, you don't just retract from it, you get into faith. And most people will retract from it, but never get into faith. And see, that's where we miss this whole thing. It's like, okay, well, today I got out of bed and I'm uncertain today. I'm insecure today. Today I'm not sure how it's going to work. Today I feel funny. Boom. Gets get in faith. Start making some confessions over who you are. He is my strength. He is my salvation. In him I will dwell and I will draw life from that, from that water of life, from the wells of salvation. And today, God will open doors that no man can open and close doors no man can close. Today, God will make a way like he always has. There's no man that I can fear because God is on my side. And who shall come against me when I've got God on my side? I will do great and mighty exploits because I know who God is. And all of a sudden, that school that you were afraid to go to, you can now conquer and become that person that God wants you to. All of a sudden, that marriage that you were running from because you had such bad experiences in the past now becomes that which brings happiness and joy and fulfillment in your life. All be, uh, uh, so many people could be having children. They don't have children because they're afraid of, of having children. You can have those children and raise them in the ways of the Lord. You can operate in that business. You can, you can l love somebody. You don't have to do this. We, we're kept like little bugs in a shell because of the spirit of fear instead of dealing with it. The spirit of fear comes. That just tells you to get into faith and believe God for great things. Come on, somebody. Four things. Number one, God is your strength. Number two, man can't harm you. Number three, uncertainty is just a part of life. It's okay to feel uncertain. Don't let it stay that way. Get into faith, which is number four. Fear is just a reminder. Feel it and then get into faith so that you can do what God would have you to do. Let's go back to 2 Timothy 1.7. I'll put it up on the overhead. Ed. overhead. 2 Timothy 1.7. You ought to memorize this verse. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. If God spoke to you tonight, come on, give the Lord a great big praise. Isn't God good? <laughs> I'm so excited to see the future because the future is filled with God for all of us that are in here. I want to make sure that everybody's right with God, so I'm going to ask you to stay seated. There's no reason to get up right now. There's nothing you have to do. Nothing. The kids are in class. There's an altar call not coming for them for 15 minutes, and I don't want you to disturb their class. So there's nothing for you to do but stay seated. Let's talk just for a moment. It would be a real tragedy for you to come into the house of God, hear this message and walk out, die. Did you hear me? Walk out and die and go to hell. Are you listening? It'd be a real tragedy. I can't tell you of the tens of thousands of people that enter American churches and sing songs to God and hear a preacher preach and walk out and they're gonna, if they die, they're gonna go to hell because they're not right with God. 
How do I know that? Because you don't get right with God because you listen to some preacher. And you don't get to go to heaven because you sang a few songs. And you don't get to go to heaven because you're a nice person. You fit into society or social system. You don't get to go to heaven because your mommy and your daddy told you you were a Christian and had you christened or baptized when you were a baby. It doesn't work that way. You get to go to heaven because you follow the rules. And the rules are that no one goes to heaven except by Jesus. And that's what Jesus said. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Jesus said, no man goes to the Father except by me. You can't get to heaven your way. You can't get to heaven my way. And you cannot get to heaven some well-meaning church committee's way. In order for you to get to heaven, you're going to have to get to heaven his way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can trust that. He's proved himself to be God. Everything in this word has never contradicted itself for thousands of years. People can argue and say, oh, man wrote it, man wrote it. Ah, shut up. God wrote it. He just used man to write it. Use your head. This has obviously for thousands of years proved itself to be the son of God. Nobody has to dictate that or, excuse me, argue that with you anymore. That's already been proven. And tonight, for some of you that are in here, you haven't yet given God all of your heart. You haven't yet given God all of your life because that's what it's going to take for you to be born again. Jesus says in John 3rd chapter, here's how you get to heaven. You must be born again. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. For me to say something different than what Jesus says would be a lie and a tragedy and a travesty in American church. Jesus said you must be born again. The problem with that is, is most people don't know what born again means. Born again means this, that you have given God all of your heart you have given God all of your life. It is an all or nothing relationship with Jesus Christ. It always has been, it always will be. All or nothing. Hey, 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 hey. I'll prove it to you. Last book in the Bible, book of Revelation, you've heard of it. Jesus is coming again, he says. You know he is. And he says these words, Jesus' own words, when I come, I better find you hot or I better find you cold. Because if I find you lukewarm, I'll vomit you from my mouth. What a rude, crude, blunt statement. I'll vomit you from my mouth. Man, whew, what a statement. Do you know what he just really said by making that statement? People that call themselves Christians that are lukewarm, are not real Christians at all and they're going to get vomited from the mouth of Jesus are rejected from the body of Christ. Wow. Some of you have been lukewarm in here. Let's be honest with yourself and before God. Lukewarm is this. Let me define it for you. A little in, a little out. A little up, a little down, a little token prayer, occasional church attendance. God is something, but he's not everything in your life. You're not against God, but you're not wholehearted for God. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're not against him, but you're not wholehearted for him. You see, you know who Jesus is. You celebrate Christmas and Easter every year of your life. You know who he is. Problem with that is you've never given him all of your heart. You've never given him all of your life. And tonight you need to stop messing with God and give him all of your heart and give him all of your life. Tonight you have a divine appointment with God. God brought you here for this reason. Tonight is your night of salvation. And it starts with you giving God all of your heart you giving God all of your life. I emphasize the word giving because he's not going to steal it from you. It's your heart and life. He's not a thief. He's not a conniver to talk you out of it or a manipulator to make you do it. Giving him all of your heart and life. It's your heart and your life and it's got to be your choice. 
He's already made a choice for you, went to the cross and died for you. The question is whether or not you will make a choice for him. He's already given you all of his heart. He's already given you all of his life. The question is whether you will give him all of yours. That's what it's all about. And tonight, in this safe, friendly place, we've laughed, we've clapped, and we've sung songs, and you are great listening to the Word of God. But let's don't go any further. Let's don't go another minute without getting our lives right with God by giving God all of our hearts and all of our lives. You say, wait a minute, Pastor. You don't understand. I joined my last church. I was there for 14 years. It was a Christian church. I sang in the choir. Uh, I was uh, christened or baptized as a baby there for my parents. I helped the pastor out. I taught Sunday school. Good. Could you show me that in the Word of God will get you to heaven? Because it's not in the Bible. There's only one way to heaven is when you give God all of your heart and you give God all of your life. I already know you know who he is or you wouldn't be here. Even the devil knows who he is and he's not going to heaven. So the fact that you know who he is isn't gonna get you to heaven. and doesn't make you a Christian. You gotta give him all of your heart. You gotta give him all of your life. You say, Pastor Jim, how do I do that? Well, let's do it God's way. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. But if you deny me, I'll deny you. In a moment, I'll count to three. I'll go like this. One, two, three, and I'll pop my hands together. Bang! When you hear that sound, bang! Your hand goes up, and I'll see your hand go up. Wow. How easy is that? What you're saying by the raising of your hand is this. I don't want Jesus in my head like most Americans. I want to give him all of my heart, give him all of my life. I want to be born again, headed for heaven, and denying my presence in hell. I'll see your hand and you can put it right back down. You know why? Because Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'm a man, I'll see it. I'll confess you as mine before my Father. But if you deny me, that means when you know you need to get your hand up and you don't. Because you care more about what people around you think instead of what God sees. Then he said he will deny you when the time comes. All across this auditorium, I'm talking to you. Back in the family rooms, wherever you're at, I'm talking to you. In the foyer by television, you online all over the world right now, talking to you right now too. You can get right with God right where you're at. I'm gonna count to three, pop my hands together. I've been running from God instead of to God again. Get ready to put your hand up. Never given him all of your heart. Get ready to put your hand up. Never given him all of your life. Get ready to put your hand up. If you're one of those people and you're not sure, you're, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but you're not sure, make sure. Tonight's your night. Make sure tonight's your night. I'm counting to three, I've done my job. Now it's up to you. Get ready to pop your hand up or sit there and do nothing. Hands are already getting ready to go up. Hold on, we'll do it all at the same time. Are you ready? Here it is. One, two, Three, let me see your hands, let me see your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you, 11, 12, thank you, 13, thank you, 14, thank you, 15, 16, thank you, 17, thank you, 18, thank you, 19, thank you, 20, back over on this far side, 21, thank you, God bless you, 22, back over here, 23, thank you, 24, 25, 26, 27, thank you. Anybody else? 27, if there's 27, there's 28. God bless you, put your hand up. Anybody, if there's 28, don't you know there's 29? Ooh, can you just feel 30? Can you just feel 30? Where are you, 30? You need to get your hand up. Ah, oh, there you are, 30. God bless you. God is so good. 30 wise. Let's give the Lord a great big praise for 30 wise people. Okay. All, I don't want anybody to leave the room. Nobody leaves the room yet. We've been in church an hour and 14 minutes. You give God a little bit more time than that. Listen to this real quick, real quick. All 30 of you, I want you to get a hold of your coat, purse, sweater, Bible, friend. Get your stuff. Listen to me. Get your stuff. Get out of your seat. Get in the aisle and meet me right here in front. Bring your stuff. Bring a friend if you need a friend. No one leaves here in this period of time. Let's stand and welcome them as they come. If you're serious about God, you get up here right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I surrender all unto Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Oh, and I surrender all. Oh, there it 
coming home. They're coming home. They're coming home. God is so good. All of you put a smile on your face and I want you to look over here to your left. Here's Pastor Dave. Pastor Dave's a really good guy. He's waving at you. He's going to do three things. You need to know what the three things are. One, he's going to lead you in a prayer to invite Jesus into your heart. You need to invite Jesus in. He doesn't come in because you need him. He went to the cross and died for you because you need him. He comes in because you invite him. He's a gentleman and won't come in until you invite him to come into your heart. It's your heart. Number two, he's going to give you some free stuff about what to do next now that you're a Christian. What do you, what do you want to do with your life? Here's what God would have you to do. You can take it home and read about it. It's real simple. Number three, which is really cool, he's going to introduce you to a program that we have called Spiritual Personal Trainers. You've heard of personal trainers. This is a spiritual personal trainer. You can meet them before church service. They'll go over scripture with you. They'll encourage you during the week. They'll pray for you during the week. You meet with them four times and you're going to be a strong Christian after you meet with them and help you keep going on with Jesus. Let us help you keep going on with Jesus. Let us help you not just come up tonight and make this little confession of your faith and then walk back and serve the devil. We want you to go on with God. In fact, if you'll give this church one year of your life, one year, I'm telling you, God will give you the rest of the years of your life totally blessed out of your song. Am I telling the truth or not? I'm telling the truth. So make a commitment. Make a commitment. And we are putting in our application to be your pastors. We want to pray for you, love you, tell you the truth all the time, share the word of God that will help you get strong in the ways of the Lord. Uh, that's, we're making a commitment to you, and we want you to come on, get on board. This is a great church to be at. Only takes a few moments. If people who came with will wait for you, make a left turn. Follow Pastor Dave right over this way. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise.